welcome, of course, to the new Dominica Chinese Friendship Hospital, and more specifically, the famous Haifu Room, the radiology department of which uh, this modern state of the art piece of equipment, I mean, immediately to my back, is part of the, the new services that are going to be offered um, pretty soon to the Dominican public. Um, I felt it necessary, in fact, we felt it necessary that we do this short, um, this short presentation, mainly, of course, to educate Dominicans as to what is it that is going to be um, on offer, what is it that the new services that we're going to offer at the new hospital, and also, of course, to dispel a lot of the miseducation that is going on out there. Now, to my immediate back, as you can see, this is um, in living color, not a figment of your imagination. Is you can touch it, um, of course, plastic new equipment. Um, the, the technical folks are here, they can allude to the fact that it is, not, it is also not leased or rented or, or borrowed for PR purposes. In fact, um, the, the, the hospital project came, apart from the infrastructure and other basic equipment like beds, etc., would have come with a number of new equipment, including an MRI. Now, we felt it necessary, as I said, to put it in simple terms what this wonderful piece of equipment do. Um, for those of you, I'm sure a lot of you um, of, um, with access to the internet, etc., would have Googled this, especially after this controversy going around, and would have found out that this is not so much of a new technology. In fact, this technology has been around for the past decade, decade and a half, but it has only recently been approved by the Food and Drug Administration of America. So outside of this, we still had um, other developed countries like Australia, Canada, who, who would have been using this equipment to treat various forms of cancers. But we know that we, a lot of us like to use America as our benchmark and the FDA in particular as it pertains to pharmaceuticals, equipment, um, and otherwise. So it was finally approved by the FDA back in 2016, if I recall, back in 2016 to begin what they call non-invasive surgical treatment. And the Honorable Prime Minister was right in his utterances when he said that it's non-invasive. And this is a surgical piece of equipment where you don't have to undergo um, a, a surgeon's scalpel anymore. Now, what is HIFU? Now, the HIFU, as the acronym stands for, um, is High Intensity Focus Ultrasound. And a lot of us, especially women with, with, with children, okay, you would have been, um, you would have accessed the services of an ultrasound at a number of times during your, your pregnancy term. Um, so this is basically using the same ultrasound waves, but in, as the name suggests, in a more focused way. If I may take you back to your childhood when we recall using, well, back in the countryside, we would use pieces of glass, glass, where you would have it reflect the rays of the sunlight onto a piece of paper or some dry bush, and in some cases, you would start a fire. This is the same concept, but instead of using light, you're using the ultrasound, invisible ultrasound waves and you focus it into an area. Now, the intelligent thinking one, um, ones among us can now begin to say, well, yes, if you can now focus this energy somewhere, there should be some medicinal use for it. So the main use, as I'm sure you would have found out, or maybe even listening to speak, would be to treat tumors, both benign tumors and certain malignant tumors, especially prostate cancer. It's particularly, it has been proven particularly useful in the treatment of um, prostate cancer. But in recent months, in recent years, They've also um, been using the treatment of kidney, liver, um, um, among many others. In fact, they are now exploring it used in brain tumors and other cardiovascular um, lesions, circulatory issues, etc. To dispel the myth that it is a cosmetic tool. So yes, this technology has been used over the years, you know, anti-aging procedures and anti-wrinkling, etc. Okay, but this wonderful piece of equipment we see is a surgical tool. And in fact, this particular model, a GC200, I think, um, costs well in excess of over 2.5 million US dollars, okay? I want to, I want to state that again, 2.5 million US dollars. Okay, so this is, um, as I said, right here for you to see, to touch, feel, in living color. Um, we, of course, look forward to the commissioning of the hospital where, um, where this service can now be available to the public, and in particular, women. Um, men with prostate issues, both benign and of course malignant, meaning um, enlarged prostates that are not malignant, not cancerous, and even cancer tissues. Um, I don't want to go in out there saying that we have something to treat all cancers. Um, it can only be used to treat what they call localized cancers, localized tumors. In other words, if the cancer already spread to your lymph nodes and other parts of your body, this machine 
will not be useful, okay? So we can, it, it's, it's an effective tool, especially in early diagnosis. And I think my friend has mentioned also breast cancers and breast tumors, both malignant and benign tumors. Um, it's also noteworthy to know that, um, and again, the Honorable Prime Minister was right in his utterances when he said that we are one of two Caribbean islands with this piece of technology. Um, I'm still researching. I'm not too sure, question mark on Trinidad, but I can speak to Bahamas, outside of the Bahamas. We are the only one I know that with this um, um, piece, of, um, piece of equipment. And also, uh, my cabinet colleagues here would also attest to the fact that um, this high-powered um, PAHO team that visited cabinet um, a few weeks ago and made, made a presentation to cabinet, they would have mentioned this equipment that they think that we are now well poised to promote our medical tourism package. So Dominica, apart from it, of course, clean, green, pristine environment. We now, have, we now have this wonderful piece of equipment that is not available, well, I can safely say anywhere else in, the, in, in close proximity in the Caribbean. So this is definitely something that we can, that we can package. And no, just to reassure the locals, though, you will not be silent or marginalized, okay? Um, every intervention, of course, comes with its own, with its own um, side effects, its own, you know. But um, the, the fact that the FDA has approved, has cleared this, it means that the minimal have been outweighed by the, by the potential benefits um, by using this equipment. Um, there have been reports of, of course, pain, of course, hey, if you burn something. Oh, yes, and that's the other thing. The, when you focus the rate, it can work by two ways, either like um, what they call mechanical disintegration, or you focus it that you produce heat energy to actually burn, burn the tumors. So of course, you will feel pain in the area for, for a little while. As I said, it has been cleared by the FDA that these um, side effects are really at a minimum. So all of these um, scaremongering tactics, you know, to, to get people to understand that we're just making a big... Um, Hula bula, hula bula, but nothing, okay? Here you have it for yourself, folks, okay? JC200 made up of three components, the water chiller, the treatment table, and the main console. As the minister already mentioned, we also, it also complements, this would complement the MRI. So the patient would first have to get an MRI done to identify the tumor. That MRI image is then uploaded onto the HIFU system. Then using ultrasound, a normal ultrasound, so you see the ultrasound machine here and the ultrasound probe would be down in here. So after we identify the tumor from the MRI, we use the ultrasound to locate and focus the beam into that area that was identified. Right? So this, the ultrasound would be done with the patient lying here on this table and this cap removed. This is the actual cap that focuses the ultrasonic waves. So a typical treatment would consists of, um, I think, about 200 watts per square centimeter, but it could go up to about six or 800 for more intense and more critical tumors. So, a basic treatment, the patient would get onto the table, an ultrasound done, locate it, then we would have to fill this chamber here with water. So, the, uh, if one of the Contradictions, two contraindications are, is the stomach. Now, why is the stomach? Because the stomach has air, right? So the reason for filling this with water is to keep the, the ultrasonic waves focused and they won't disperse to damage other parts of the body, right? So after it is identified, then the focusing cap is placed on the ultrasonic probe. Doctor then focus the, the, the area that he wants and the appropriate treatment. As I say, a basic treatment is about 200 watts per square centimeter, and then they would burn the tumor. As you can see, this is a typical example. Let's say that this is a basic tumor, right? So it would focus on it, the tumor where exactly you want to burn, and if you can notice the inside, of the 
So it burns the internal part of it without affecting none of the external structure. So this would be so this would be a basic phantom. So this one that's no tumor and this one will be tumor burnt. I've worked in the service industry for nine years and I love it because of the people I get to meet every day. And that's one of the reasons I went back to college, to be better able to serve the tourists when they come to our destination and to be able to learn more about Dominica. I love learning more about Dominica because the more I learn, the more I can share. And I just want to share Dominica with everyone. I'm from Manjan, which is in the southeast of Dominica and have lived overseas for 24 years. Living overseas has made me appreciate Dominica and all it has to offer, like taking a walk in the forest, going to the botanical garden, or even drinking fresh sauce water. I never thought I could miss green so much. Even as a student, I'm still directly linked to the tourism industry, from something as simple as giving directions to tourists, or even more involved, like an internship at a hotel, or a cleanup campaign with DHTA. As a tourism student, I have made the decision to take my place in this tourism industry. My name is Lucina Nicholas, and tourism is my business. <laughs>